In the last two and a half years, the Lagos State Government has been in the forefront of various infrastructural renewal drives across the state. Yet, government is not relenting in efforts at delivering more life-transforming projects for the benefit of Lagos residents. I say govern them but they do it in a great job Street lights in all over Lagos It's bringing out the beauty in Lagos That was what Oshodi looked like months ago but now is the ongoing Oshodi Transport Interchange a project that is set to change the future of Oshodi Research shows that Oshodi attracts about 1 million pedestrians daily with over 300,000 passengers and various motor parks scattered around it. Therefore, the quest to provide an organized transport system that will ensure free flow of traffic and enhance security of lives and property becomes imperative. This gave birth to the idea of the Oshodi Transport Interchange, an iconic and tourist initiative conceived by Governor Akiumi Ambode. There will be three terminals within the multi-level car park interchange. Terminal 1 serves intercity purposes. Terminal 2 will serve the Lagos West connecting Abuliegba to Alimosho. Festac, Okokomaiko, and Badagri, leading to neighboring African countries, while Terminal 3 is for passengers going to Lagos Island, Ikorodu, and Ketu Ojota Axis. The space for the proposed Oshodi shopping mall and other facilities has been earmarked, and work is expected to commence in January. The mall, when completed, will be a major turnaround venture for the business and leisure outlook of Oshodi. The projection is that by the time the terminal is completed, we are going to have nothing less than between 500 to 1 million people congregating around that area every day. These people are going to shop, they are going to need leisure activity. So the mall is meant to meet this demand and satisfy the growing population within Oshodi. So the whole idea is to create a new commercial centre out of Oshodi. And as we speak now, uh, a lot of work has gone on already. We have finished the design, so construction is going to start uh, early in the new year. Uh, so part of the plan is that the mall itself is not just the mall. It's as also hotel. Sixth floor hotel is there. Uh, there's cinema, and of course there's children playground as well. So the intention is as people are crossing from work as they are passing through Oshodi, they can engage in commercial activity. They can bring their families, you know, to come to Oshodi and have a nice time. You know, so the whole idea is to recreate and regenerate Oshodi completely, not from a transport perspective alone, from commerce, from entertainment, from tourism. So because the new Oshodi we have in mind is going to be one of the most iconic center, one of the most beautiful and attractive center in the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa, and that is the intention. His initiative towards this environment, Oshodi. Like we all know Oshodi formerly, you will say that he's a man of ideology, which is he's a man of ideology that has the people in heart. If you watch if you watch Lagos recently, you find out that Lagos is becoming a transformed city. Other than before, and it's faster without the detriment of the people. Construction is going on and yet business is going on. You understand? It's not affecting the people. Because this is what we expect that uh, all the tax uh, that has been collected by government is used for something like this. With this, this will encourage uh, people to pay their tax if they are seeing a physical project like this that can be of uh, help to masses. I am talking about myself. I pay my own tax. I pay annually, every year. And uh, what I'm trying to, to tell the vicinity, uh, the Lagosians, that they should start, those that are not paying their tax should start paying their tax for now. Because Ambode is not doing this job with his money. It's the government money, and the, the government money is using to pay do it is the tax money. First, so if we pay our tax, enough job, enough roads will be done, enough job will be done in Lagos State. I will advise everybody in Lagos, both market women, market men, to be paying their tax very well, so that we will be seeing what they are using our money for. They are using taxes to repair community in, uh, in all areas of these areas. They are used tax to repair it. Without tax, we can't, we can't repair anything in Lagos State. 
I, I, I advise everybody to pay tax and land use. A little after Oshodi is the road leading to the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, a road which many have described not too deserving for a former federal capital in its present condition. The Lagos State Government has therefore taken it upon itself to reconstruct the road, which will also be linked to the Oshodi Transport Interchange upon completion. At the moment you have just three lanes, some places even two lanes in each direction going towards the airport. Once you have the five lanes plus the flyover, plus the U-turn bridge, plus the pedestrian bridges, uh, you've made the road safe, you've given the international airport, you've changed the face of, of Lagos, you've changed the face of, of the way tourists and travel uh, and the way the world looks at, at this state and this country. As part of efforts at ensuring a clean and hygienic Lagos, the Cleaner Lagos Initiative was introduced. 27,500 men and women have been employed to drive this campaign. In the next two weeks, the street sweepers will flood the streets of Lagos, performing their duties. <laughs> Visionscape, executors of the Cleaner Lagos Initiative, will bring on board waste management and utility vehicles, waste and wheeler bins, build transfer loading stations in Agege, Oshodi, and Simpson Street, maintenance depot in Ogudu, Moshi, and Takpa, and the first landfill site and Echo Park in Ekbe. Government will also, any moment from now, introduce the public utility levy which covers everything concerning the environment. Residents are expected to start paying by next year. At the moment, work is in progress with the right of way for the expansion of the John Carriage Way of the Lagos Abeokuta Express Way. This project includes the BRT lane from Abuliegba, which will terminate at the Oshodi interchange. Along this route will be 14 pedestrian bridges to be sited in areas like Mangoro, Adialu, Pleasure and Katangwa. Site engineers are already casting the beams. Uh, the inhabitants or residents of Lagos State should assist him to enable him to do more, to enable him to perform more. It's very good for people to pay their tasks because it will help the uh, government to do their work easily, to fund the, the, the work. In the Ayobo, Ikpaja Amikole axis of the state is ongoing construction of 20 boundary roads with Ogun State. The roads, which include the AIT Road Alagbado, Church Street, Itapa, Bale, Ogusheye, Osenatu Ilo Road, Jo Ikebudu, the Kola Boundary Link Bridge, Amikonle Road, Ayetoro Road Dualization and Bridge are expected to improve the economy of Lagos and impact on our strength as a smart city. I really appreciate the development. It shows how the present government is performing. We, we really love uh, Governor Ambadi because we've been here for long, almost uh, been here for almost ten years now. And uh, then we, we we all we all know what happened. We all know what happened during the time before the coming of uh, Ambadi. We couldn't see any development. Since my being here, development, we didn't even hope that this road will start immediately even this year. But to my greatest surprise, March this year, they just came in and they want to do this road. We thought maybe they would just abandon it. But glory be to God, they have come, they have finished the gutter, they have finished the first level of the road, the first phase. And now we learned that they want to put a street light. That is the work they are just doing now. And they are trying to fix pipe today. So we really thank God for the development that is coming. Other facilities currently enjoying the maddest touch at the baby factory at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital Lassuth Ainke House, a project that is nearing completion. The various road constructions in Ekbe that will further open up the division to economic growth and tourism. The Mekeajido Windspring Palm Road in the Badagri division of the state. 
the Onikon Stadium being built to international standard and the proposed Agege Bus Terminal, to mention just a few. It is necessary to point out that these construction works would have been impossible were it not for the payment of taxes by Lagosians. Lagosians must understand that as partners in progress, paying of taxes is a prerequisite. Which I believe uh, the resident of this place must pay tax. Because without, without tax, nothing can be done here. So, and being the secretary, I talk to our people whenever we are having meetings. That's, we are all government. So, and we want government to do something for us. How do they do it? They cannot just give their own hands in their pocket and say they want to develop a certain area. But the money they are collecting from people is the money they are using. Since we are seeing the work government is doing, that it is good for us to cooperate with the government to pay our tax because it is very, very necessary. If possible that maybe we are not seeing our money, what they are using the money for. You know that I will encourage it. But since that we are seeing the money, what the government is doing with our money, we encourage people to pay their tax so that government can see money to do carry out their project. Is that something like government money? That's something like government money. It's the taxes that people are paying that you are asking for this shoreline protection, you are asking for us to defraud, you are asking for us to do the ropes and all that. The number of people paying taxes in Lagos is less than 600,000 people. And we are 22 million. And in the bracket, 67% of the people living in Lagos are below the age of 35. So even the retirees, how much are they paying? They are on pension. So you have to go through your nose and then you want to be as compassionate as possible that in a recession you don't overtax people. So there must be a convergence between civic obligation and the ability of government to build trust and be able to tell people that, you know what, the little that you are giving me, I will use it judiciously. When I use it judiciously, you see it over time. Trust me, if you pay more, I will do more. There are more projects currently at hand, and with the handover of the Presidential Lodge Marina to the Lagos State Government by the Federal Government, initiatives such as the J.K. Randall Center for Yoruba History and Culture, the Lagos Museum, the History Center, a multi-level car park, and the Marina Bus Terminal will be completed in due course. The more they see what we're doing, the more inspired taxpayers should be to perform their civic obligations and when they pay their taxes. Our commitment remains the same. We will use these taxes judiciously and also expand the growth and the economy of Lagos so that we, you know, life becomes safer, cleaner and then more prosperous for all Lagos. The Lagos State Government is grateful to Lagosians for keeping faith and believing in this administration for the support so far. This advocacy is therefore necessary to appeal to Lagosians to continue to pay their taxes as this is not only a civic obligation but a lifeline for government to continue to provide more infrastructure. No place like Lagos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like